Okay, welcome to our Rotary E-Club of District 7710 Tuesday, July 31st uh, meeting. We thank you for joining us and tonight we're going to talk about the Arusha Water Project update and club involvement. And uh, I'm going to share my, my screen. We're um, very happy to have everyone on the call tonight. And would like to give everyone an opportunity to hear the latest on our water project. Our signature service project, international service project, has been um, water. And we started in 2015, as many of you may know, that um, we were able to do a district grant um, through our sister cities of Durham relationship we had with uh, St. Joseph's and Guerinero Secondary School in Arusha, Tanzania. This um, school I visited back in 2014 and um, was speaking with the headmistress about their needs and was told water. They didn't have running water at the time. They're an all-girl boarding school that had um, 300 students, um, including the teachers and the staff and so forth. And so it's a very large campus in the Kasongo region of Arusha, which is a very dry region of Arusha. And they um, were having problems with their pipes. They were um, rusted or burst, just no running water. And so they had a lot of students um, having to pick, uh, pick, get pails of water each day and they were experiencing um, contamination of the water. So cholera and typhoid and things like that were happening. Um, so the solution back then was to repair the pipes. So we were able to do that. And successfully with our partners, uh, we had uh, Southwest Durham, Durham Rotary Club, and Global Run for Water, as well as uh, others donate. Um, we had the Arusha uh, Cl Rotary Club of Arusha Golden Sunrise as our um, host club, international club, and we were all successful in making that happen. <clears throat> in 2016, we um, realized that there was more to be done with the now running water. It overwhelmed the system, and they realized that the water system was only able to handle about a hundred um, people, persons. That was all it was built for. So now we have full running water and the system is overpowered and it was causing issues. So um, working with our water Rotarian um, Sanitation Action Group, we were able to identify um, a, a organization that had standards and were, um, I guess, a quality uh, repairs that would be done. And what they recommended was an actual, not the repair of it, but the actual replacement of the system to make it um, a system that would be um, th that would be. Um, able to handle not just the uh, amount of water, uh, you know, the distribution of water, but also that would be solar powered so that it would work even when there's not electricity or what have you. And particularly, it would have um, a sanitation and hygiene built in so that there is some type of water treatment as well. So this is called Water Mission and uh, their approach is a very comprehensive approach and we'll talk more about them but what i want to do is step back and as you know um, we have to partner with other clubs and they are considered our partners we're not just asking for money we are collectively engaged and involved even if it is just a matter of someone giving us funds to do these grants and so I wanted to take a different approach. As you, most of you know, we've had um, updates before, and I realized I didn't have the approach of bringing the people closer to you. You've seen the students multiple times, but let me introduce you to our Arusha Rotary Club, 
a Rotary Club of Arusha Golden Sunrise in Arusha, Tanzania. Um, the gentleman I'm pinning the um, actually be an inspiration pin on is Boniface. He, he was the president at the time when we did the district grant. And um, these are members of his club and they meet on Tuesday nights as well. And so when I was in Arusha in May, we were able to actually meet with their club for their Tuesday night meeting. And we were able to share, you know, where we were as far as getting partners that we still are looking for partners. And we were able to um, just acknowledge Boniface for the work that he was doing from the club's perspective, you know, leading the club to help assist us. So I um, was able to pin the Be an Inspiration pin on his jacket. And then we were able to take him and um, actually they have, not in this picture, but an assistant governor was there as well. Um, we were able to take them to meet St. Joseph's. They worked with St. Joseph Boniface did, but he indirectly, um, he had a different member at the time that um, was overseeing it, but there really wasn't a relationship with St. Joseph's. And so this opportunity gave the opportunity to the um, Rotary Club to connect with the school. And in doing so, it helped a great deal because the school <laughs> actually admitted They've been working with us so long, it was a great relationship, but they really didn't understand what Rotary was. So they opened the door for the Rotary Club of Arusha to come in and start, um, you know, just participating and doing other things, um, not necessarily raising funds or anything, but just letting the school know, educating them on what Rotary is. And so um, it was actually a good discussion about other um, groups in the area uh, of Arusha that really didn't know what Rotary does and who they are. So this was an opportunity to do that. Um, so you see pictured uh, myself, but Boniface, and this is a school administrator. Um, we're at a table with um, other administrators of the school, as well as Cosmos, who is the teacher who's been working with us all along. He became a Rotarian actually this year. So that was a very good um, opportunity. Uh, the next um, was a change. Okay. The next pictured here is a global grant assess community assessment. So the, the actual global grant now requires us, it, it didn't before, and some of you may not be aware, we've applied, but we had not actually, because we don't have our partners in place, we actually did not submit the grant. So it's in the system, it's in the online global system for us to, you know, it has all the details in it. The grant is complete as far as the actual application, but because we don't have partnership to raise the funds that we need, we haven't submitted it. Um, in the process of the past year, a new rule came in that we needed to have a community assessment. And so this assessment I um, did with the teachers of the school to talk about the community. And if anyone's interested, I can give you um, a copy of that assessment, but that now is going to be attached to our global grant. So I sat with um, the teachers in um, just you know, asking questions about the community that they were in, about the students and, and, and the just environment around them. But also this community is in a district called the Kisongo District. As I said, it's a very dry district. Um, and in this area, they have ward officers. So I don't know, if we would call them our city councilmen maybe, um, but the ward officer, and I have many other pictures I could show, but for this purpose, I'm only just showing um, us. It was very, very interesting. We actually went into um, an area where they had a farmer's market, but it's like no other farmer's market you've ever seen. It's, a, it's more like the flea market, actually, but it's bigger, like 10 times bigger. Everyone from all over the Arusha area and region come into this every Wednesday to sell things um, like produce, of course, but also tires and just whatever they can find. And so they were actually calling for this, this, the country, 
it was actually calling for ID cards to be re, um, redone. <laughs> and in the process of redoing those ID cards, um, somehow we got in touch with the ward officer. He invited us to see this process. So we, again, I don't have a, it pictured, but there's 100 people outside of the door. We're in a very small cramped room. And he took, they were all like pushing to get into here because he's issuing these cards. And he told like at least 20 people in this space to get out <laughs> and myself and that's my husband Tony to come in and sit with him to talk about the community so it was very um, eye-opening for me but it was also very helpful to understand the surrounding community of the school so this is the type of activity we're required to do now for our global grants so we talked about the water mission approach I know it's not kosher to stop no go ahead please so that I can understand something. In the first couple screens, it, do I understand correctly that the original um, program, the original project went through, that is the repair of the system, and then it was determined that it just wasn't, it wasn't adequate to the, to the needs for the community or for the school. And so it was it an entirely different project that, was, that, that took off? Uh, to to uh, in, expand the the, uh, the so, capacity and right. so then where does that stand? Where the, were there two discrete? Right. So originally, what we were doing was replacing the pipes for so the the water supply wasn't there. We, they were getting water store you know in tanks brought in by the military. And then the, the students that you see here would go with buckets to go get the water. And that's how they would bathe, they would you know, cook, they would do everything with that. But the um, running water was needed throughout the campus. And so we got the pipes put in so that the water was coming in to um, the, the facility, to the campus. But once the water was up, you know, as, as running as it was as supposed to, it overpowered the system. The system wasn't built properly. And it, what was strange is the campus is rather large. Go ahead. I was off for about the last three minutes. Oh. I was kicked off. I, I'm not even sure if you heard my question. So why, Yes. Okay. So could uh, you can save the answer because I don't want to okay. interrupt just because I, my, my system went down for a number of minutes. Okay. Okay. So Good. I'll come back. Okay, I'll come back. Yeah. So um, now that we're um, talking about water mission, we were also able to go to. Um, it just so happened we were traveling from Arusha, which is northeast of Tanzania, to uh, northwest of Tanzania to an area called Kasulu. And it just so happened that we were doing that and that we found out that Water Mission had a, a, um, a site, an office there in that area, and they were working with refugees. They had been uh, commissioned by the UN to get in and actually bring safe drinking water to refugees. So the purpose of me going was to introduce myself to the Water Mission. Um, this is... Um, Will Furlong, and he is the one who did the assessment at uh, in Arusha with St. Joseph's, his people did. And um, he's out of uh, North Charleston, South Carolina, and they are now in Kasulu for a year. But the whole purpose of this was to understand the equipment and what, what, what we're going to see in Arusha when the project actually takes place. So this is a container of all of the equipment that they have. That's where they store their items. Um, this is an example here to the left of the solar powered system. And um, again, they basically, um, let's see, did I have another picture? I don't have another picture, but um, they, all around this area they had pipes and he was showing me how um, they dig the borehole and that's what they're going to do in Arusha. So he kind of gave me an idea of what it will look like when it's finished. Um, so that was the purpose of seeing them. Um, 
So the recommendation again for Arusha St. Joseph's School was to provide a reliable source of water, and that's why now we're going to build. Uh, we're going to dig a borehole. That they're going to actually construct a borehole, and the proposed system maximizes the existing piping. So, kind of um, to your question, Richard, we're not replacing the piping. I'm, we're, we're going to use it. Now, there are some pipes that um, we found that were, um, that are not, they need to be reburied deeper. So again, the work that was done was by contractors, um, local contractors, that the standards aren't there. So this um, issue that occurred pro actually could happen again. So um, Water Mission is going to dig deeper those pipes so that they can, um, you know, last longer. But they'll also have a solar powered system that will provide 15,000 liters per day and add a, a power selector that can permit the operating of the AC grid as well as the solar. Okay, so the cost, and it was actually asked by one of our members that I actually show the actual application. So, um, and, and show the actual budget and the costing of it. So this is the budget, the equipment that they have is 59,802. The project management, which includes assessment and engineering study that had to be done in order to determine what was needed for the school, was $4,594. The travel to and from St. Joseph's and um, Rotary Club of Arusha Golden Sunrise is $1,500. So the local people at the Rotary Club, um, they um, it, it was recommended that we have some um, some opportunity to help them with the cost of fueling. Some of them don't have vehicles. Um, where they live is far further away from the school and so forth. So that's what that is for. Um, operations, community development is $4,136. And this is actually, again, ensuring that there are people that understand the system that's being put in. They will maintain the system that's being put in. They will learn also how to, um, to market it so that they can actually sell, have sellable water to the community. Of course, it's not going to be a whole, whole, whole lot. The community of Kisongo in that area where the school is, it's about 10,000 people there or in the surrounding area and villages around there. But there is a small farm right near the school and so forth. So this will help that area as well. Um, and there will be a monitoring evaluation um, follow-up and support period, and that's about 35 hundred fifteen dollars so with all of that um the actual budget is seventy three thousand five hundred and forty seven dollars and so that's the amount that we are looking to fund and um the fund uh, the funding of it here is um broken down by the partners so these are our um people who have um said that they would partner with us and the first item here is the designated funds from the district. So the district, if you are able to get $8,517, the district will give you a match. It's not a one for one, but a match of 15,000. Okay, up to 15,000 if you have that number, if you meet that number. And so, um, that we put that in and so then there's um from our club we have um budgeted 1600 from the um rotary club of durham they have budgeted 2000 and this amount here that says support is an actual fee that the rotary foundation um fees the costing of this you know the whole global grant um, administrative cost. So each amount is going to have to include those fees. The Southwest Durham Club has committed to $1,500. 
Crowsdale Retirement actually has um, given us 3,000. This is actually, we, um, this money is um, there. Um, Arusha Golden Sunrise has committed $100 from their club. The E Club One of, um, oh, I can't see the district there. I think it's 5410 or something, but they've committed 2,000. And then the Global Run for Water has committed 5,000. The Naples North has committed 1,000. And then Sister Cities of Durham, Arusha Committee has committed 1,000. Oops. Okay. Um, Rhonda, can you yes. say again what support means? The column it's, to the right of a map. Okay. So this, <clears throat> so this comes from the actual global grant the actual online application. When you enter in an amount, it actually calculates automatically the feed portion of that amount. So that is administrative cost through the foundation. So when someone like commits $1,600, they have to add an additional $80 to their commitment. <clears throat> in this case, as you see, okay. As you see, just giving you an example, here's a $2,000 commitment, an additional $100 is the fee, administrative cost, that needs to be added. You see the 1000 they have a $50. So that's nothing that I'm doing that's part of the global grant. So recalculation and understanding the process better, I was able to um, see that the, um, Cash contributions is 8,200. Non-rotarian contributions matched by the foundation is 9,000. The financing amount is 47,200, of which we still have the 26,347 needed to meet our goal. Okay, so with this, I am now like to share with you um, ways or, or actually the next steps. Next steps is to um, ask more on the involvement of our um, e-club members to talk to other clubs. Some of you may have transferred from other clubs and um, you may have contacts still that um, you can reach out to and share. I'll have a one pager that I will send out to everyone that describes this in one page <laughs> and you can share with other clubs to um, invite them to partner with us and it's at any amount we're not asking for anything specific but you see the amount remaining so um, uh, we'll give you that as well to share with them um, we're doing David Moffitt and myself um, with the global grant um, we are still doing presentations to other clubs, so we're still going around our district talking to clubs. Um, we also want to be mindful of, of clubs outside of our district. So some of you may have actually gone, uh, I mean, transferred from clubs outside of this district. They are still able to partner. The Naples North was a club in Florida. Uh, club One is the club, the first Rotary E-Club in Canada. So we have opportunity to, um, I'm sorry, in Colorado, we have opportunity to still um, reach out to others. And then the Global Run for Water I'd like to share with you is um, a, a, a run, walk, and relay. So you don't have to run, even though it's in the name. <laughs> it's um, this year, it's on Saturday, November 10th, and I want to encourage everyone to sign up, and we'll have that information for you. This is, again, the Global Run for Water. They gave us funding for our first district grant. They are giving us funding again at 5000 for um, our, our our project, this uh, global grant. Um, that could increase depending it, how well they raise money. This is how this um, Global Run for Water, this is how they raise money for water projects. And so um, our participation, as you can see, I think this was 2016, Sharin, myself, Kathy, and Eve 
we've kind of made it our thing to do every year. It's been on October mostly, but now it's in November. We've never ventured to have this relay, but we're inviting everyone to be a part of this relay <laughs> so that we can show this is a demonstration of what it is for some in other developing countries to carry water again when water's not available to them so it's it's fun you know there's some prizes and things like that but um just would like to see the club involved um in this way as well so with that said i believe that is the final you know once we raise the full amount then we will be able to submit this grant so that we could actually um go to the foundation and get funded. So that's the, that's the final step that's needed is to get our um, partnership funds together so that we can go after the actual grant. So that's all I think, um, Richard, did I answer your question or do you have, anyone else have any questions? Well, actually, I, I didn't hear that. Yeah, I, I actually have a couple, uh, Rhonda. Um, oh, Richard, let me see. I'll mute. Can, can, can everyone hear me okay? Can anyone hear Richard? He's Hello. really groggly for me. Hello. Uh, well, I, I, I can hear Lonnie. Okay. Go ahead, Lonnie. Okay. Um, um, I, I guess what would help me, uh, being a new member, is to really get something in hand that will kind of tell you what the grant's all about. So when you're selling it or sharing it with folks, you can speak relatively intelligent. Because right now, I can't, someone asked me what the ultimate goal is. I, I guess it's to provide water for Arusha. Um, yeah, I, just a little bit of background. So if you can send out that protocol, but I mean, as far as what our goal is, I, I guess it will help me. Um, the other thing is, is that so we're, we're okay. Go ahead. That's okay. Go ahead. You want to answer that one first? Or how do we address that? Yeah. So, so yeah. So we are raising um, funds to pay for a water system for all girl boarding school in Arusha, Tanzania, and we're replacing their system so that they would have reliable water, clean water. Okay. Um, That'd be great. So if you, if you can give me all the background information, I'd like to do a flyer so that we're all saying the same thing with the same bit of information and we have something to hand out to groups. Um, that would be cool. Um, the other thing is when I looked at the numbers and this is just a thought. So I, I looked at the numbers that you just shared. Um, what, uh, how, what kind of participation are you getting from the folks in the local area from a standpoint of active involvement um, doesn't always have to mean money but what what kind of an involvement um, one of the things that you know when I see projects like this I, I always think of how do you get that project to grow now that you've taught them what kind of commitment do we have from them to maybe go help a neighbor um, I, I, I don't know so maybe that's not something we think about right now with this project but um, that's that's on my mind um, and last but not least the um, right. The event that we have come that you have coming up November four. If we can yes. kind of get some information on that, it'd be kind of cool to market it. If you, you know, if, if that's going to help us to grow it and to get participants. Um, and because right now I, I I've never done it, so I don't know what it's all about. Looks like it might be fun, but you know I I, I wouldn't know where to begin telling someone why would you want to help us with this, other than the fact that we're going to build. You know, we're going to put water in uh, in an area in uh, Arusha. So I hope no, I didn't ask too many questions. questions. Hopefully, I shared some just some things that I, as a new person, I wouldn't. I, I just don't know where to begin. And I I appreciate that. I do understand. I had uh, the learning curve with David um, Moffer because he, as you know, is new as well, and he's been assisting me as we go on this campaign to talk to different clubs. So I do have a, a one pager of flyer I'll, I'll show you what that looks like but we are um, also um, with the, the um, students they are able to help 
like that local farmer that's nearby with water. So it's, it, they're, they're actually giving back to the community, but they're also helping fund the school. So this, this is not just a one way street or they're just receiving and that's it. They're actually um, pretty engaged students in the community and this will help their community as well as their school. Um, this is the one page flyer. Can everyone see my screen? It's really fuzzy, Rhonda. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's really, yeah, really fuzzy. Yeah. Pretty much unreadable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You've got graphics well, I mean, in the system tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to it, share it? It? It, would, it would just be neat. I, I guess it'd just be neat to sh share that kind of stuff. I know. Yes, let me, do you have it or do I need to? Sustainability is always a word. I can share it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you see it? Oh, my yes. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, looks Thank good. You. So when I went to convention, that's what I handed out to the the people that I met and talked to. And that's how last year, actually, we were able to identify partners as well. Oh, great, so, great. Yeah, so okay. we are using this, the details are there. Um, I'll update the amount to, so that you're knowing what the target is, but the total is there um, because okay. it's changing kind of rapid at the time. I didn't bother to keep updating it. I just was asking for partnership, but I can show what it is now so that you know what you're aiming for. Hmm. Okay. And I can so, also, I, I can actually add additional partner, you know, to it so people will see who else is partnering with us sometimes that, you know, people yeah. are interested in joining. Okay. Well, Rhonda, on, on the flip side, we could probably, on the other side, because that's, that's all crammed into one page, so we might be able to just do a, a running list of the partners. That might be really actually pretty cool. Yeah, like the financials on the offices. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Uh, any ideas on how else we can engage as our you know club i one thing i i see um an area of weakness and why um i've been unsuccessful in getting us to get this goal is one I, i'm new to rotary but mostly i didn't have the networks and then i realized that that's where you know david and i kind of collaborated on going out to clubs and talking to them and you know so realizing that um when we're doing service projects and we need funds, we have to have other networks to help build. Or this is also an opportunity for us to consider our fundraising campaign. You know, what do we want to do when it comes to fundraising for not just this, but maybe other things we want to do in our local community and so forth. So, um, you know, connecting with other clubs is is very um important to the health of our club as well so just want to encourage the membership to you know continue our engagement um maybe we can see if there's an opportunity um for us to i know eve has ideas for us to get other fundraisers going um so there's you know collectively i think we can think of ways to do this i think i was um, kind of keeping myself in a silo. And I think that kind of made it not go, the momentum of it kind of waned because of it. So I'm, I'm now hoping to take a different approach and get people, you know, especially the club engaged. Okay. Uh, Rhonda, this is Jean. Uh, also, <laughs> isn't Lonnie involved in, in, in communication as well? Yes, Lonnie is now our new PR guy. Yay! Yeah, so that that you would certainly have to. I mean, at least consider using him and his his group as a resource to to disseminate some of this information, and 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 also uh, from an internal standpoint, uh, consider individual members' donations as well as the interact group for fundraising. Oh, that's great! Thank you. That's great. Hey, Gene, that's, that's a great idea, Rhonda. What, uh, and I guess the reason I'm asking for all that information is to kind of create a marketing plan, but you can't do it if, you know, I, I just, 
wanted to make sure I had enough information. Of course, I'll run it by the group, but I'd like to look at what actually what you have on what uh, Eve has on the screen right now um, yep. in the way of sharing and taking little portions from that. Yep. Um, yep. Do we have permissions to share that, that photo of the students there or is that something yes, that's forbidden? Fine. No, that's fine. This has been shared. Actually, we did presentation to the library. It is, it's been shared a lot. Okay, yeah. okay great, great, great. So, so folks, what, what are your thoughts on putting this on Twitter um, and starting to share this and uh, Facebook? And uh, um, if I guess we'll need dates, like when do we expect this to uh, find out uh, some finality? You know, we'd like to have all this resolved. We'd like to have funds in by. Um, all those things are questions that typically is surrounding things like that to make them happen. Okay. Do we have a finality can, to it? Yeah, I can give you those dates. Um, I can also... Um, I, th I think the, the key element is where the funds are going, so we need to have that. So I will definitely get with you offline. Okay, and great. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. All right. Rhonda, have you checked in with all of our um, e-club partners on the presentation? No. So, yeah, that's the next step for me is to reach out to them to see if they would like to. You're talking about the five on the panel that we yeah. just did in the convention. Yeah. I think there were 10 clubs that participated overall. So whether they presented or not, but they were participating. So they might be, that might be a good group to tap into. It's a good idea. I, I definitely was talking to one. <laughs> but I need to reach out to all of them. Just a thought, Rhonda, um, because even though I know it's a lot of money, we're getting close. So, uh, you know, it is it possible to, um, and I know that all the, um, I don't know how to say it, the, the grant system, can we go to like something like a GoFundMe page or, you know, to out there, or do we want to get involved in that? I don't know. I um, need to find someone that can receive the monies because right. um, we can. So the monies need to go to the foundation anyway. Mm -hmm. So I need to also work with Richard <laughs> to yeah, talk about right. how that works. So mm -hmm. the monies need to go through the foundation anyway, so that we can get a match from the foundation. Right. So I think that they will then be eligible, but you know, for their tax, you know, purposes, right. but I, I need to work. So um, I will, Richard, we're, we're meeting with the foundation um, committee anyway, tomorrow. So right. we'll put that on the list and then, um, no, it's a good idea, but I just don't know how the, the how it Cali logistically will work with funds mm -hmm. coming in. But I'm sure there's a way to work it out. I'm not, I was concerned about doing it at first, but I think it's time. We're at the end now and we can just get to the end of this would be great. Well, and I, I hate to, I, I don't know if this is going to sound good or bad, but you know, there are some clubs that are larger or have the resources to support more of a project like this. And I yes. didn't know if we were targeting those clubs. I know we, we've met with quite a few, you know, in the Durham and Cary, Apex area. Um, but there are clubs in Raleigh. And as you head out towards like Clayton and Oxford and some of the other clubs that might make sense. So Sharin gave us a club. I think it was in Oxford, like you're mm -hmm. talking about. Right. And there's another club I'm just supposed to be talking to in um, Chapel Hill, I believe. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So, but if you, this would be good for everyone to, you know, share their um, their contacts or the networks again, the clubs that you know that would be interested. It would be good for you to let us know that information so that we can pursue it. Or if you again have relationships, introduce me. You know, you can. If you don't want to be the one to ask, <laughs> you can at least send the email and say. Hi, you know, Joe, this is Rhonda, president of our club, and we're looking to do this. She's going to tell you all about it. You know, it, it's good if I have everyone being ambassadors, though, but, you know, I, I get it. If, if that's the barrier, then let's get rid of the barrier. And no, I, I know that the, um, 
like Marie Howard and her husband, they used to be in the Oxford Club a long a while ago, but they're in the, and Diana, I'm sure knows quite a few people as well, but they're in the Clayton Club now, 